I thought it would be best to start at the beginning. Some of you know this story already, so I'll try and make it as brief as possible. And if you want to know more, just tell me in the comments underneath the video. Back in 2003, I had just been introduced to, to Tolkien's world by Peter Jackson's movies. Return of the King had come out and like most people out there who were fans, really enjoyed it and was just desperate for more. I loved watching all the behind the scenes on the DVDs and just really wanted to be a part of it. I had discovered these things called fan films, um, seen various Star Wars ones on the internet and then found out about a fan film competition. Basically, there was a convention in Seattle um, called Tolcon, and that was going to be, I think, in March or May of 2004, and they wanted Tolkien um, fan films. And I thought, ooh, what a good idea. I can make a film, and I can make it about something that I'm really enjoying at the moment. Um, I've always liked historical fantasy films and, and so this was great, it was perfect. I mentioned it to, a fr to some friends and I, I think they sort of went, yeah, right, at the time. And, um, but I sort of thought, no, this is a good idea, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start this. And basically that was the spark of it. So I started to do some stuff and I posted out and tried to get people interested. I've got a few people, Various people were very curious about it, although only three people turned up to a meeting that I had and the first question was, is this a joke? Which is understandable, but, and uh, people probably would be still asking me that question now. I got a hundred and something um, CVs through the post from actors interested, um, including some of the actors who are in the final film. Um, Philippa Hammond, who plays Everwen, actually was interested at that time, and so are the elves, actually, so are the Kennard twins. And, uh, but I was like, I suddenly realised I couldn't do this, not on my own and not with any experience. So I sort of shelved the project, kind of left it, hidden away in a cupboard for a bit. So my journey through um, Born of Hope and the whole, the whole period, the whole project has been quite interesting. Um, it's, it's actually started out way before the auditions themselves, um, because I did a film called Into the Darkness, which Kate directed, and I think that was in summer. 2005 and funnily enough that involved a character running around in woodlands with a sword and you know I played that character and I was quite happy doing that and I think Kate sort of saw in me that little 12 year old boy that was finally got <laughs> to play with real swords. Abigail. <gasps> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> I spent all of 2005 pretty much making movies and was got really, really into it and wanted to do more. And there was no real project. And I was like, I don't have any ideas, you know, because the project I directed, I actually inherited from another filmmaker, which is how I met Christopher Dane, because he had already been cast as uh, the lead in that film. So when I had nothing else to do, I was like, well, I don't have any ideas except this Born of Hope project, which is just a bit too big to deal with. So a friend of mine suggested just doing a test shoot, to, like eliminating all the elves and the orcs and, and anything complicated, and just doing some test shoot scenes, um, like casting it, getting wigs and costumes and whatever I wanted to do and just shooting that. Um, and I thought that was a good idea and so I started to put it together. After I did another film with uh, the Cambridge filmmakers, um, she kind of asked me if I wanted to audition for Arathorn in Born of Hope. And it, you know, I think I thought about it for like a split second because again it was like one of those things. The films, uh, I'd seen all three films um, and just felt a bit left out because obviously I wanted to be in those. I think every actor I know would have loved to be in, in, uh, in Jackson's trilogy. Um, so there was just a little chance of being a part of the whole Lord of Rings universe. Um, so I, I said, obviously, yes. There's an acting sort of website or bulletin uh, you get emails through called Shooting People. And quite a few years ago, I'm looking through there and I think right at the bottom of the page, there's this Lord of the Rings project. And I thought to myself, what? Oh my God. <laughs> so... <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, you can't get professional actors to be in a fan film, a Lord of the Rings film. And then I sort of read a little bit more and I thought, well, they, they know what they're doing and the story's pretty good because I think it mentioned that it was going to be the story of Aragorn's parents. And I, I always, from reading the books and reading up on about yeah, a lot of Tolkien, when I was a kid I always liked the idea of the Rangers of the North. These people who, who are sort of the remnants of a, a great nation. And, um, and I thought, well, actually, you know, if you got some decent footage out of this, it'd be brilliant for a showreel because you're going to be dressed up as a ranger and you're running around with a sword. Wow, that's why I became an actor. That's fantastic. You know, you start getting these images of this fantastic landscape. You're walking around in, you know, it could be summer, big epic stuff. And then the next day you find yourself in an, an old church in, in the middle of winter. Um, I had a bit of a cold and a big scarf on and you're reading with these various people trying to read for their parts and it's probably as far removed from Lord of Rings and that whole magical fantasy universe that you could you could ever come. This is oh. Marnie, this is Chris. Hi, Hi yeah. And you. Boy. Cold right here, isn't it? You, you know you're playing an orc, right? Yeah. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, well, didn't you see the makeup? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, at the same time, it was quite, it was still quite interesting and quite special in, in the way that, that you had this script that was going to be part of, um, of the whole visual universe of, um, of Tolkien and Lord of Rings, and, uh, and that was quite interesting. It changes nothing. No one is more sorry than I for your loss. But it does not change you and I. It changes me. I'm surrounded by death and darkness, and it will continue to be so. You think I would choose this life for you? It is not your choice to make. And so I went along to the casting, and um, I met Kate, and um, and I read for Kate, and I think I actually read in the casting with Beth at one point. Who do you hope to see? They won't be back for weeks. I know. So, why waste your time? None of the time I spent thinking of you is wasted. Maybe when you're older. The only bits of script we had to read were uh, basically Gildine and, um, and Arathorn. So during during that casting, I I read uh, for Arathorn, even though you know, I don't think Kate really ever considered me for that part. Um, you know, I was completely wrong for it. Arathorn. My father is slain. It happened as we traversed cold fields. North of Rivendell, it was chance. We stumbled across a group of hill trolls. He sacrificed himself for our escape. It changes nothing. No one is more sorry than I for your loss. But it does not change you and I. It changes me. I am surrounded by darkness and death, and it will continue to be so. Do you think I would choose this life for you? It is not your choice to make. I got on really well with Kate, and uh, what? Well, and yeah, she offered me the part of of a ranger and of uh, Gildine's brother. Actually, I hope you like this podcast. This is episode two, and uh, I will try my best to get episode three out as soon as. Okay, bye. So. Yeah, the main inspiration behind this film really is um, George Lucas' Star Wars trilogy. No, <laughs> I'm joking. I just did a 30 minute piece to camera without the mic plugged in. That's stupid. Hello. Um, yeah. <laughs>